I just finished making changes to my belt grinder to put it on a different stand. And I'll have a video on that in a couple of days. But I wanted to make this video specifically to cover a problem I encountered while doing this. It has to do with crown pulleys on the machine. When I built mine, I only crowned the idler wheel. And that was generally what I was recommending. I'm going back on that now, though. I think that all the wheels should be flat unless you release the tension from the machine after you use it. Even so, I still think that the, all of the wheels should be flat. And I'll tell you the reason why. What happens is if you can see right here, my belt is tracking off of the idler wheel slightly. And what happens is if you leave the tension on here, it will stretch that side of the belt. And what happens when that side of the belt gets stretched is it'll wobble back and forth. I'll turn it on and I'll give you a good look at it. So as you can see, that's really wobbling back and forth quite a lot. And I gave it a lot of thought, you know, I was trying to figure out why it was doing that. It wasn't immediately obvious, but then I got to thinking about it. I said to myself, it has to be that the belt's crooked. And I knew that the belt wasn't crooked when I put it on because it was tracking true when I did that. So to give you an example, I'm going to put a brand new belt on and show you the difference. Okay, this is a brand new belt. I just put it on, got it all lined up and everything's running true. Now look at the difference. So like I say, there's a couple of solutions for this. If you're gonna build this machine, which I highly recommend because it's a very useful machine, very easy to make actually, too. it looks complex, but the plans are so well laid out, it's all step by step. Take the materials, cut it into the parts, put it together, every assembly step is covered. Really not much problem at all. If you're gonna do it, I would recommend that you make all of the wheels flat. No crown whatsoever. Like I said, it really doesn't need it because this has really good tracking. This knob right here adjusts the tracking so that if this wheel is actually flat, it really doesn't make a difference. I think in general, you're probably better off releasing the tension, at least to the point where it's slack like that, it'll be fine. It won't stretch the belt. And that's the problem that we're trying to solve. Now as for the belt, where it's stretched, it looks like it's stretched right at the uh, splice because when I take it and stretch it tight between and put it up against my fence, which is straight, I can see that it's actually about an eighth of an inch away from the fence at that splice. I don't know how well you can see that, but believe me, it was an eighth of an inch away from the fence. Now, if I flip it around and go the other way, it's exactly the opposite. Take it and hold it up. This end up here is away from the fence with the first part of it here tied up against it. So I don't know if I can restretch this, possibly by putting it on the machine and uh, putting pressure on this side of the belt to try to stretch that out. I'll give it a try, I got nothing to lose. Now there are direction arrows on this. I don't know if they make any difference. Um, this splice is not directional in any way, so I don't think it really matters that much. So what I'm gonna do is put this on and then I'll, I'll mount it so that this side of the belt is on the crown of the wheel and then put tension on it. That should counteract the the twist because this belt is still pretty good. The grid is still pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to let, let you go here. This is enough of this. I hope that this was informative to some of you, especially people that have made this machine or, or actually have a machine like this that does the same thing because I'm sure it happens to others as well. If you leave the tension on, it will probably stretch that belt.